All right. Um, we are going to be going live here with Annie Lou any second. And uh, yeah, just while while we wait for her to tune in, um, just would like to encourage all of y'all to post any questions in the comments and uh, yeah, we'll sometimes there's a little bit of a delay, but we'll get to them as quickly as we can and uh, Thank you all for joining. Um, so, let's see, where is she at? Um, yeah, as more people are joining in, again, we're gonna be going live with Annie Lou any second now, and uh, feel free to post any questions or comments and send us your love. Where is she at? <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, just waiting for her to tune in and then we'll get rolling as soon as she does. Um, hi, Joey. Uh, okay. Hey. Hi. Oh, it's weird. Hi. Good. I wasn't sure how to get in. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always really tricky, but <laughs> once you figure it out once, it kind yes. of. <laughs> It's good to see you. Yeah, I was just awkwardly there, like, all right, I'm just gonna <laughs> keep. Oh yeah, I've been there. <laughs> been there. In fact, the last, the only other time I've done one of these was when uh, Joey and I did our art show. Oh yeah, I was there I was by myself and kind so... of panicked and hung up. <laughs> I promise I won't do that to you. <laughs> Please don't. I'll hang up for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's good to see you. How's your day going so far? Good to see you too. Pretty low key. I, I spent um, 18 hours in the new store yesterday doing some construction and painting. So wow. my my body is a little like <laughs> yeah, you over, probably need over some, it. some stretching or just yeah. some general laying down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, some um. horizontal. <laughs> oh, Joey thought that was funny. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we can go ahead and like get rolling. So for anyone watching, I'm Jillian. I'm the shop assistant at the Glitterbox and this is Annie Lou. And if you want to give a little brief intro on who you are and what you do. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. 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 You. <laughs> um, well, I'm Annie Lou. I am uh, an artist and shop owner and lately uh, amateur construction <laughs> person <laughs> um i've been in new orleans for the past just about eight years came okay. from atlanta i do a lot of work with mixed media so i like to work with textiles and also acrylic paint um and I've, lately i've been mixing them together i guess we can i've been doing a lot of that too it's fun yeah yeah it's like really fun that tell me <laughs> oh i i'm moving right now so i'm like trying to find something but i think everything's packed up <laughs> fair, fair. You but i will, I will show you me. what we have the same color living room uh well this is actually a sheet that i use for shooting at anything for the shop and i just set it up as a backdrop so perfect <laughs> yeah but for now we can pretend that yeah we have the scene. yeah we're just in the yeah. we're in the same room yeah it works out great <laughs> Um, so how did you start selling at the glitter box? Oh, let's see. Great question. Hmm. The glitter box. I feel like there must have been some other artist I was working with at the Frenchman art market. I'm not sure if it had converted yet to the palace market. Yeah. But from the beginning of the Frenchman market, I was selling art there. And through... I don't even know. 
it's like it's like it's hard to tell how you know yeah. anyone specifically in New Orleans. Like, I don't know. We're just yeah. It just it just kind of each other somehow. Yeah. You made that connection at some point, and right. And that's fine. And here we are now. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, did you? So you said that you've been in New Orleans for about eight years. So like, what what was the thing that pulled you to New Orleans? Moving here was really done on a whim. I have spent, I spent a lot of time in New Orleans, even in childhood. My dad was a, an airline employee. So I had this like really unique privilege of when I would, my parents were divorced. So I'd go to my dad's house every other weekend and we would like take a day trip on an airplane. Yeah. From Atlanta, <laughs> which is like insane. <laughs> but, but super yeah. normal to me at the time. <laughs> And this was always my favorite place to come. So I've just kind of like, I, it's funny, I have like pictures of myself as a little, a little kid with like uh, mimes and street performers that are still out, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, I was 20 something years ago. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome that they're still doing that even after yeah. so long. Yeah, so I feel, I don't know, I feel a connection to this place in a lot of ways. It's definitely, as someone who's spent a lot of time traveling without yeah. a really strong sense of home, it's been, it's been a really welcoming place in so many ways. Yeah. It's like, it's such a like living, breathing entity, you know? I love that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great city. I think a lot of us come here in like very unplanned ways and it just kind of like it, it gives you that feeling of home that you can't find somewhere else. So yeah. I can definitely relate to that. Definitely. Especially as any kind of creative person. It's just yeah. like so inspiring in so many ways and there's so much so many different cultural mashups. It's it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's it's impossible to not be inspired in some way while you're right. here. For sure. Like no matter how hard things get it like it's still a beautiful place to be and like yeah. and no matter how hard things get it's like yeah. everybody has each other's back and that's so mm -hmm. special it's not it's not like yeah. that anyway. <laughs> I, yeah there's definitely no other city like it so yeah. um so what is your like trajectory as an artist like did you set out to be an artist did like what oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've fought it for so long. <laughs> when I was growing up, my, my mom was an art teacher. And so okay. as as a child artist, I got a lot of a lot of professional critiques, mm -hmm. which I was very <laughs> disinterested in. <laughs> to yeah. point where at a young age, I was kind of like, I have renounced art. <laughs> My human doesn't need to be eight heads tall. I give <laughs> up. And kind of, I mean, you can't really help it. Yeah. <laughs> if you have it in you to create, you can't really help it, I guess. But because yeah. of that, I have no professional or, it's not the word, but I have no art education, really. <laughs> I mean, the like it. It's a thing that you do. Like, yeah. yeah, you can go to school for it. There's a lot of things you can learn, but it's a cool thing about art. It's like yeah. there's not really, not really rules. Yeah, and there's so many ways to express yourself creatively. Like a, a piece of food that you make can be art. You know. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to my therapist the other day about it, and she she was just like, yeah, Jillian, like, even when you, like, haven't been making art, you've been bartending and making art that way, like, that's art. And I was like, yeah, you're right. That's yeah. very true. Totally. So, yeah, I think, like, you get to be creative in all sorts of ways in your life, and you don't need to, you don't need any special training to be creative. Right. It's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what is your process usually like when you're when you're making art, when you're creating something, whether it's a painting or a snarky heart, which I love your snarky hearts. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, my usual process is to start something, spend one day on it, and then get another idea and start something else. And then I have 20 projects going at once. Mm -hmm. And for something like Joey HD and I do a lot of shows together and we're both I think she described us as very prolific and very procrastinating mm -hmm. 
is <laughs> very true. <laughs> we kind of both have to set a date and have a deadline in order to really knock some stuff out. And then once we do, it's like, oh, we have a show in three days. And we're like, <laughs> somehow, five minutes beforehand, I'm like, oh, yeah, look, here it is. Uh, somehow. Yeah, deadlines make everything a lot easier. Yeah, but even <laughs> even then, I have so many unfinished pieces of art. It's just like the last show we did, I would just, I just finished pieces of art that I had already started on, essentially. I don't think I, I think I had one brand new piece. <laughs> and that even <laughs> took forever. <laughs> I mean, I love that. That's totally fair. Um, I did like, speaking of snarky hearts, like how did that whole idea come about? Um, hmm. I think that I'm kind of often trying to use humor to express <laughs> something real. And I think they started out kind of that way and then became a little more fun. <laughs> yeah. Because when I started making them, they were all kind of mean, you know, they were a little like, you're ruining my life. And, uh, <laughs> and now they're but like, in the you fart your sleep. <laughs> they got gotten a little cuter over time. <laughs> I really appreciate the mean ones, so just keep them coming. <laughs> I, like, I like the mean ones too. I like the contrast. <laughs> yeah, I really like the balance of like this like very honest, like direct statement that just comes in like a really adorable heart. <laughs> Thanks. Because you, no one can be mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I guess I guess they could, but not for long, really. No. No, like, oh, get a job. Like, it's, it's real, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. um, so do you have any pieces around you want to you wanna I, show I us? Do. I've just piled them around myself, it's especially in case I panicked and ran out of things to talk about. So I have to, you know, just show oh. you. <laughs> Great. Yeah, no, show, show everything. But I, I do. I have some pieces from the show that Joey and I did recently, and it's still up currently. It's like a super cool. Yeah. I don't, I, you've seen it. I don't know if the however many people are here. <laughs> I've seen it, but it's it's really cool. Uh, go check it out. I'm gonna post a, the link in my stories. So you guys yeah, it's a really cool setup where you can like walk through like as if it was like an actual gallery. So yeah. I recommend people checking that out too. On video game. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's see. Maybe I should. No, that's okay. So let's see. I'll just kind of like flash through some of the pieces. Yeah. I get really awkward talking about my art often. It... And I'm trying to get better about that. So <laughs> bear with me. This is this is good for me. <laughs> Great. Let's let's I'll keep let... practicing then. <laughs> A lot of times at markets or something when people are like, tell me about this piece. And I'm like, ooh, I made the art so I don't have to talk about it. Yeah, I get really <laughs> weird when people ask, like when they ask me about like photography or paintings and I'm just like, yeah. it's a thing that I've made. Just interpret it yourself. I don't. Right. <laughs> I, don't I think I have to remember too that like my interpretation, it's it's art so it can be interpreted in, interpreted in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like this is, I don't know. Here we yeah, go. no, I can I can completely relate. It's already making me so. wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if I can even fit her in the frame. This is a painting. Oh yeah, of... that one's gorgeous. Thank you so much. This is of a friend, Cat. This was actually a a picture she took of herself that I asked permission to use, of course. <laughs> but yeah. she's just like a super badass woman. She's a poet and dancer in town, and she's so stunning. And um, I just kind of tried to do some things with the fabric to contrast the the kind of strength in the mm -hmm. expression with some softness. Um, these pieces I added for our recent show. So I added them, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. When was that? I'm, I was doing it the day before the show, naturally. Yeah, what is, what is time anymore? Right, yeah. <laughs> Years ago. <laughs> Uh, could have been yesterday, you know, could have been three months ago. <laughs> yeah, something like that. We're like living in dog years now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's gorgeous. Thank you so much. The The pieces I added are scraps from the face masks I've been making. So I've awesome. made in the past couple of months, I don't, I don't know, like hundreds 
of face masks. Most of them get donated. I also mm -hmm. sell them sliding scale. I think I'm some are coming to Glitter Box. Yes. Soon. So yeah. they'll be there. <laughs> but it, that is all correct information. <laughs> They'll it's a little surprise I... we're putting together that we haven't announced yet, but yes, the mass will be a part of it. Well, maybe, <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really love, and like in that piece specifically, like as soon as you said that she was like a poet and like music, I was like, oh yeah, like it all makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, I think that all the fabric and the colors around it like really highlight that. So, awesome. good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I guess I can, here, let me actually, this one, how do I get this in the frame? Burp, 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 burp. Oh, I think you can also flip it, maybe. Oh, interesting. Well, it's there now. <laughs> I'll just show it briefly. I'm like doing an acrobatic move to get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an old one and I do, just kind of showing you because I do a lot of pieces that are I don't I, I, I think I spend a lot of time being uncomfortable mm -hmm. <laughs> you know in, in social situations or whatever and I do a lot of paintings of just like a place that feels really comfy okay so maybe if I'm feeling uncomfortable with maybe whatever feelings I'm sitting with or whatever it's just like such a comfortable thing to do I'm like well I'm feeling really strange so I'm just gonna paint yeah. the couch <laughs> <laughs> and the hey. sunset and then <laughs> I'll be in this place and this is different yeah no I feel like sometimes we like we find a lot of comfort in things that maybe someone else would see and be like that doesn't look comfortable yeah but... <laughs> totally because I feel like someone might look at that and be like, oh, what's that position on that chair? But like yeah. for me, I'm like, yeah, I would totally sit that yeah. way and I would feel I'd great. Like <laughs> yeah. Wake up with a backache. Exactly. Yeah. In the same vein, but also kind of in contrast, I have a lot of pieces that are like, like this one's called escapism. And I have several pieces that are kind of, there's like a little bit of the world somewhere, of the real world. And then. <laughs> That's kind of another comfortable place to go. It's yeah. just like deeper and deeper into your imagination. And so I, it's it's a bit of like this person's going on this journey to this like familiar but forgotten world maybe. Yeah, that's also absolutely beautiful. And yeah, that's another way of like traveling and going yeah. places even when you can't go anywhere. Yeah. Even when we're stuck at home till God knows when, but. Right, yeah, we're so equipped yeah. with the transportation tools. Exactly. Just <laughs> grab a brush. <laughs> yeah. Paint a mural in your bathroom. I don't know. <laughs> I know someone's done that recently. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. <laughs> um, let's see. I'll just, I'll just go through a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, please do. I just, I just have them. These are all since they're fabric and paint. I like to not stretch the canvases and just sew the bias tape around and then I can roll them up and transport them. Oh, yeah. Somebody, that one's somebody cool. wants to that's give funny. me lots of money for it out at the market and just take it right home. You know? <laughs> I love that piece so much. Thank you. It's too big to fit in the. This one um, is called. Thank you for participating in our free trial. Please rate your experience. And it's another kind of just like a, a feeling of doing anything kind of, I don't know, adulting. Yeah. <laughs> there a better word. <laughs> when it just doesn't work out and you're kind of like overwhelmed with information and flooded. What is an adult? Yeah, what, what is an adult? So there's this, you know, this giant, ooh, there we go. Giant um, plastic spoon catapult. On Love it. <laughs> island of the Earth. And very, very recently, I changed the moon into cheese just before our, just before our show, like day of our show. Oh, I'm just going to make that cheese really quick. I love that it's cheese. Cheese it's is kind of like cheese. reaching for this, for this like unreachable floating in space, right? So you don't even know yeah. how far away it is. <laughs> 
or if it's worth it or what's happening. I mean, it's like objects and mirrors are closer than they, than they appear, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how long you want me to show you things and talk about them. I mean, you can show as many things as you want or as little as you want. We can also talk about some other stuff. Um, I know... Kate mentioned that you used to do a lot of like speakeasy style um, shows and whatnot. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Ah, the days. <laughs> <It's getting speakeasy. laughs> um, you know, that's, a, that's another thing that really drew me to living in New Orleans. It's like, yeah. especially at that time, it's, it's like you could kind of do anything, you know? Mm -hmm. So the first house I moved into, I had a little shop in that house. It was a commercial and living space. And then I would do these like spaghetti Western nights in the backyard and make a giant pot of spaghetti and show like an old Western movie on a projector. And sometimes a band would play and it kind of spiraled or snowballed. Spiraled is bad, snowballed is good, depending. <laughs> <laughs> Words yeah. are <laughs> um, <laughs> snowballed into all these other events, and we did all kinds of benefits. And then I moved into a different house called uh, we called it the Spaghetti Speakeasy Listening Room and Library of Art and Wooden Chairs. <laughs> um, Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> everything it offers, all in the title. <laughs> I'm really bummed. I miss I miss that. <laughs> but, yeah. Someday, someday it'll live again in another form. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a slightly different title, like add another word to it. Yeah, it could be longer, I think. Yeah, I think it could definitely be longer. <laughs> I think it would benefit from being longer, actually. Yeah, right. And I don't think that Instagram handle is taken, so. The what? I don't think that Instagram handle is taken, so. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if at any point I run out of characters, probably, right? <laughs> Maybe I don't. What's I don't the know. limit for Instagram handles? That's a really good question. I have no idea. One way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep typing to. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. That sounds. That sounds really fun. I hope. I hope that someday it does come back into fruition in some way. Because it was. Yeah. It was pretty dreamy. It's also a really good. Um a really good way to be creative and host parties and be social as like a, a sh kind of shy person. Yeah. <laughs> because when you're hosting an event, there's always kind of a thing to go do, you know? That was one yeah, of the you things don't when, actually have to... when we did our show recently, I was kind of like, we're on Zoom, right? And I was like, oh, I'm just here. People are asking me questions and I'm, <laughs> my stomach is turning. Yeah. <laughs> you're hosting a social show. Oh, I have to yeah. go open a bottle of wine, so it's yeah. great. I'll tell you about that piece of art later. Yeah, now with like all of these like virtual hangs, it's hard to do that whole stepping away thing. For yeah, a it's more nervous for sure. It's like, what can I think of to do while everyone's staring at my face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I feel you on that for sure. Um, do you want to talk about slow down a little bit? Sure, yeah. Um, slow down is a shop on Magazine Street. It's fairly new. We opened on Halloween of last year. So now that we built this really cool store, we just moved everything <laughs> right across the street. <laughs> so like kind of like a, an ant whose ant hill got stepped on. But it's actually it's it's a really I think it's a really positive move. The space is bigger. Um, there's a lot more freedom with what I can do with the space as far as construction and painting and drilling holes in the Always wall. Like I was having to, having to be really creative with freestanding objects in the old spot, and there was a lot of like, I hope that doesn't fall down on me. <laughs> <laughs> or like, oh. <laughs> um, you know, not, not often, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it make me nervous. <laughs> well, well, it's good that you can put more things on the walls now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been it's been a lot of work, but it's it's super rewarding, especially now to see it really coming together. 
I think the first the first uh, couple of weeks were kind of daunting because it's yeah. it's literally a storage space. So this this was the storage space for the shop that was across the street previously, and so it's it's like a giant gray cave. There <laughs> there was no lighting hanging, Ooh. just some like some some like uh, LED lights plugged into the ceiling and some shop lights. Still, still kind of. It sounds like beautiful lighting. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's just like industrial cords hanging everywhere. Yeah, it's everything, a vibe. There's no windows, so everything was super dark. <laughs> and it was kind of just like really overwhelming. Also, the space is cute. But in the past, in the past couple of weeks, I've done a lot of painting. And one of the things I really like to do that I don't get to do a lot of is installation work. Yeah. It's just kind of hard to just decide to, you know, you can decide to do a painting and do a painting, but you can't really decide to do an art installation and like, <laughs> and just go for it. To do it. I mean, you could. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah. So, so the store has kind of become that outlet, even just in painting the walls and things. There's like, two rooms where if you look from any angle, it kind of, in my opinion, <laughs> it kind of looks yeah. like a, a sunset. And I'm trying to kind of hang a, hmm. maybe hang like a orange paper lantern from the ceiling in the center. So it's a little, I think I'm, I'm just missing my, my cross country road trips that I'm usually on at this, this time of this year. This time of year, yeah. yeah. Well, that seems like a great way to kind of put yourself in that mindset. So yeah, it's it's really fun. It's really fun to be able to create something big, even if it's just in the painting and lighting. It's a little extra. Yeah. So I don't know if you mentioned it because I think we might have gotten sidetracked with all the building and getting excited about it. But um, that about can right. you tell folks like what slowdown actually is in terms of like what you sell and do with that space? <laughs> Sure can. <laughs> um, for the most part, we sell vintage clothing. It's it's really the emphasis on the clothing we sell is more on slow fashion as opposed to just the clothing being old and qualifying as vintage. Yeah. We try to to do some extra research and pay attention to like where something was made and what the material is and kind of organize it based on that um just the fashion industry is so fucked up <laughs> it really is <laughs> it's like insane and it's so i think it's so easy to be kind of flooded with like the right thing to do in all kinds of situations as far as recycling and it really i i, I feel like it turns people off because there's so much there's so much information to remember it's like mm -hmm. It's easy to just be like, okay, I'm not, I'm not even going to worry about it. But I, I think it's yeah. one, of the, one of the facets of that that's more overlooked, the clothing industry. And it's something that's so easy to just kind of pay attention to, like, the materials you're buying or where your clothes were made. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um so that, that was your I always want to like offer up this of statistics space. and things about clothing getting thrown away. Like clothing you donate gets so much of it gets thrown away. I'm not have my like thumb in so many pies. I'm <laughs> is that the phrase? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's easier for me to just direct. I can in my stories later I'll put some some resources for reading about the fast fashion industry and how like kind of awful it is, but it's just, it's kind of, it's so easy to just do your best, you know, as opposed mm -hmm. to <laughs> being so adamant about every little thing and getting overwhelmed. Yeah, I think that's definitely, I mean, I think more and more people are starting to be like slightly more conscious of where their clothing come from, comes from and like where to buy it and yeah. things along those lines, I think. <laughs> I think another inhibitor too is it, it does kind of seem like this th this kind of fashion is like intended for people with money like how can I afford to buy something that's like produced ethically when it's 10 mm -hmm. times more expensive than but it, I mean it's just when you think about it if you're buying a $10 pair of jeans one like how much did somebody get paid to make that 
Like Nothing. how many how many processes did that go through? How many people were involved in your one pair of ten dollar jeans and how long are they gonna last? It's like if you yeah. buy a pair of jeans and it lasts you three months, you're not really saving money, you know? Yeah, if you're buying a ten dollar pair of jeans every couple of months, then right. yeah, like you might as well spend a little more on something. Yeah. And it just feels good to save up dog is about to get in the front of the tape. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, my cats are my cats are yelling right next to me. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Um Kaboo, you just started to me. Um it just it feels good to wear something that you put a lot of thought in and saved up some money for, you know? Yeah. It's it might be a bad business practice, but when people come in and they're like not sure about something, I'm always like, Don't buy it. <laughs> Go walk around. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do that too, where like, I, I will tell people like, you know, and sometimes I will do it at the shop too, when people are feeling overwhelmed and they're like, oh, should I get this? Should I not? And I'm like, you know what? You're welcome to take a walk. And if afterwards you're like, oh, I should have gotten that, then come back. Right. <laughs> yeah. It Like, I'd rather you take something that you're like genuinely are going to value than just buying something for the sake of buying something. Right. And just the act, I think, of taking the walk to think about it is going to make that, whatever that object is, feel a lot more valuable to you later. Yeah. And sometimes, oh, no. like, sometimes you do see something and you're like, oh, that has to be mine. Like, I need. Yeah, that. that's true. I think that happens to me a little too often, especially in the shop. Yeah, I have to it's set like, hard really rules for myself at the shop. shop. <laughs> Um, all of this is from Glitterbox. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why don't you just looking at it all day? Mm -hmm. Eventually. Yeah. But what I'll do I'll is like, like, sometimes, sometimes I'll be like, okay, I really love this thing. If it doesn't sell in X amount of time, yeah. then I'll take it. That's, that's what I'm going to say. I'll sit there and look at the same thing for a month. And I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. nobody wants it. It's mine. It's meant yep. for me. Sometimes I like I will check when I come in. I'll be like, "Oh, is it still here?" All right, all right. It's, yeah, it's still probably mine. Checking on your friends. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. I keep I keep kind of getting off track, I guess. But so slow down. We sell vintage clothes, yeah. clothes fashion. We also sell some some non vintage clothes that are made from upcycled materials. We have some. We have these really great dresses that are made by a company called Field Day and Friends. Some oh, I saw these. They're great. So these good. are some rad ladies in Oakland that I, I met when I went out. I For the past couple of years, I've been going to the Bay Area for the summer and working for an airline. Obviously, I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, or don't have that job currently. Are you sure that's not what you're doing at your house right now? <laughs> well, not this moment. It's kind of that part of it's kind of a blessing because I don't know what what I would have done with the shop moving and mm -hmm. having to go out and work. I don't know. It's overwhelming just to think about. <laughs> yeah. But um, Field Day and Friends is from Oakland. There's another out of town company that's also a group of ladies called Power and Light Press. It's a women run printing press out of Silver City, New Mexico. Really adorable town in New Mexico. New Mexico has really like got it covered with adorable towns. <laughs> just like noted. Road trips through New Mexico, just like stop somewhere. <laughs> 30 minutes. No, I've never been, but it will be out of nowhere. It's like what? <laughs> the most adorable place I've ever seen. <laughs> um so we we have a lot of we have a lot of vintage clothing, but a lot of other things too. It's really just a store full of kind of like thoughtfully produced things. Okay. There's 36 or so different vendors, I think, currently, whether it be artists or vintage vendors, jewelry makers. And I, I just think everything in there is so great. <laughs> yeah. I've Do you have so a specific to... set of people that you're getting all your clothing from right now? Or do you just like see pieces and like get pieces individually? We have some specific vintage vendors who bring some things in. So there's um, two badass associates who are work, work with me at the shop and they both have their own vintage companies. One is, if you want to follow them on social media, one is Southern Kitsch Vintage and the other is Kim Show, Nola. 
and they just bring in such cool stuff. Uh, I bring in some stuff, and then we have five or six other vintage vendors who bring in different kinds of things, and it's just great because everybody really specializes in something different. So we've got like the the really glamorous like 30s, 40s, 50s nice pristine things are coming from one mm -hmm. vendor we've got like a lot of western wear and like kind of kitschy like other 50s things coming from another vendor there's another vendor who's really bringing in like 90s like cool crazy giant pants and cool colored stuff sounds great <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just like everybody's really bringing something different and it it's it works out so well and it's kind of i mean it's not a huge it's not a huge group of vendors, but we have a lot of stuff. Man, we have a lot of stuff. I've been moving that stuff the past <laughs> couple of weeks. <laughs> like, it never ends. <laughs> I um, mean, that, yeah, I kind of feel you on that right now in terms of the fact that I'm moving and I keep being like, why is there stuff? Yeah, there's always <laughs> another drawer full of things or another cat. There's always something you've forgotten about for like, feels like 40 times. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I have, one more, I have one more trip from this side of the street to that side. 40 trips later. <laughs> <laughs> Little stuff. It's wild. And we've only when... been in this place for, since October. So it's like... Yeah, so it hasn't even been that <laughs> Um, When do you think the new space will be ready? So the the market... I don't know. Have you, have you been into the old space? So I now? haven't. So we, in the old space, we were actually in the back of a marketplace. So you had to walk through mm -hmm. the marketplace to get into the shop. Yeah. The new setup is similar, but we do have our own door. So there is an entrance through the marketplace, but then there's also an entrance on 6th Street, which is great. Um, I'm not sure. The market is opening on June 5th. Okay. So it just seems I'm a little nervous about it. Although it's like everything is uncharted waters. Who knows? Who knows what the right thing to do <laughs> in this, these situations are? I would like to start with just maybe an appointment system. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing at the shop right now. Yeah, at least you know for maybe a week or so, and you can you can see into the store from the marketplace, even with just a, a sign up, a walk in sign up. Mm -hmm. So there's only one one person or one group of people shopping at one time. Um, so then I also, I'd, I'd like to meet with other people that work in the shop with me and see what they think before I make any real decisions. Yeah. June 5th, definitely for appointments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if anyone wants to go shopping on June 5th. <laughs> yeah, June 5th, we'll say June 5th. Yeah, I make sure to make an appointment, but <laughs> you can go on our website now and actually make an appointment. The idea is you make an appointment, you can send us an email if you want with kind of your style and what your size is if you want. Otherwise, you can you can just roam around, but then we'll we'll kind of curate something for you, have it out, and then you can still look around at everything else that we have in there. And we have a much nicer dressing room than we had in the <laughs> built actual dressing room. We had this little like shower stall kind of situation <laughs> in the old one. I mean, yeah, that's, I feel like most played like small shops in town have similar. <laughs> yeah. It's a place to take your clothes off. It's yeah. Just... It's like, do you have a dressing room? Well, there's a space over there yeah, you can take <laughs> Yeah. That works. Yeah. So, so June 5th for appointments, so you can go on the website make an appointment, send us an email. Get you some clothes. Get you some clothes. Come see the yeah. new space. Come check out this sunset room. Yeah. Oh, I, I really do want to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you could say something to yourself five years ago, what would that be? Oh. Five years ago. Man, I feel like I'm in such a different place than I was five years ago. And I've been thinking yeah. about that a lot lately because of the situation we're in. We're mm -hmm. kind of like, I, I mean, I just feel like I need to get, 
I don't feel like anyone really has their shit together, but compared to myself five years ago, I've really got my shit together, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like, if this had happened to me five years ago, I, w I don't know what I would have done. I don't know how uh, I would have survived, you know? It's just like crazy to think about. Um, what, would I, what would I say to myself though? I keep going off on a tangent. Oh no, you I I'm enjoying it, so you're fine. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I mean, I can I I'm sure I was at some point going through some kind of crazy thing and just yeah. just like you just have to keep going to the other end. Like whatever it is, it it always feels overwhelming, but if you just keep going, yeah. Like, it will be just okay. Bring, bring your kids <laughs> with you. It's okay. You don't have to put them down. Just, like, keep, keep <laughs> moving. There's something else. Maybe it's not better, but it's different. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, yeah, different isn't always better, but it, okay. it's at least not whatever it is you were stuck in. <laughs> it's another experience. It's another lesson, for sure. Something else that will make you grow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have any other art stuff you want to show before we move into this lightning round? Um, I guess I can, well, I have two, the other two pieces that were from the, actually, I have this mask, this mask here. Oh, the mask. So for our next show, Home Planet <laughs> Limitations, part two of the infinite series of Home Planet something or the other, I'm making this series of these guys with the uh, hell yeah some fun stuff going on it's another kind of like mixing something like dark and scary with something goofy yeah are, are, are they cute. like functional like would people be able to like wear those and yeah i think that this would at least you know you'd be allowed into the grocery store <laughs> <laughs> they're they're made out of the same components as the masks that I make regularly. This is muslin cloth with a layer of interfacing inside. Okay. And then they just, they, you know, they have a little extra. They're probably not great for wearing often. I think that being washed often might be a problem. Yeah. But maybe not, pretty sturdy. So maybe, maybe for a special occasion, you know, we still have yeah, those. Yeah, those are your special occasion masks. Yeah. <laughs> Glamour masks. Advertise mask. them like that. Yeah, great. <laughs> Um, all right, so favorite color? Favorite color changes frequently, but right now maybe orange. <laughs> favorite food? Favorite food, spaghetti. Anything noodle related really is my favorite food. Noodles are my favorite food. Okay, any type of noodle? Any type of noodle. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna revisit the spaghetti thing in a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> favorite yeah, piece of clothing. Ooh, favorite piece of clothing. I have two favorite pieces of clothing. Um, one is a dress that I bought in Portugal from a from a street vendor, and it's just like it's just like a simple button up floral dress with yeah. pockets obviously it's i learned i learned the bolsos is the portuguese word portuguese word for pockets this, the woman was trying to tell me that the dress had pockets and it was like not a language that i was even yeah. vaguely proficient in at the time <laughs> and it was just like a whole hilarious just like jumping up and down like <laughs> yeah I mean, you, you gotta love that it has pockets and i'm like i put my hands in it and she's like bolsos <laughs> <laughs> cool it's just that dress has just been with me on so many adventures. Um, it's, it's just one of my favorites. Um, another, my other favorite piece of clothing is I have a jumpsuit that belonged to my father, and it's he's passed away since. But it's it's got his denim is, is this cool kind of like storybook of someone's life, right? If somebody wears the same mm -hmm. denim object for a long period of time, it, it really. It's you can see where their knees were. You can see how they wore their clothes. You can see where they kept their phone. Um, but his, his has his like little gross chewing tobacco circle in the pocket. I find it really charming now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that. <laughs> I love that. 
Um, and that is very true about denim. I like immediately popped it to, I think I mentioned it when, when I talked with Joey, where like my favorite thing is this jean jacket that used to be my mom's in like the 80s. Cool. And I think it's very true that like it does carry like history in such like yeah. such a great way. Um, go to karaoke song. Mm, I I really don't like to do karaoke. <laughs> How about so favorite songs to dance to dance to then? Oh, favorite songs to dance to. Well, okay, it depends on what kind of dancing. Man, I miss dancing. <laughs> I dance alone in my room a lot. I, d I do a fair amount of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, here, here in New Orleans, there's just so many great, there's so many great musicians. I have so many talented <laughs> friends. It's just like stupid. Like I can't, I don't even understand. Yeah. Everybody's so amazing. So I would say my favorite, I don't know my favorite song to dance to, but just any but of my, any, any of, my of your friends. friends. Ooh, I miss it so much, being close to people. Hey, that's, that's a great answer. And yeah, I definitely miss, like, just live music and being able to chill and dance. Like, yeah. I miss it so much. So I am with you. Something on your nightstand. Mm, my nightstand. I've got, let's see, a plant, a t a, the tiniest clock. A little clock this big. I don't like to go to sleep near my phone. It's like a that's healthy. Something I try to be a stickler about. I don't always follow through, but just to have I try to wear a watch and have a clock by my bed so that I don't have to look at my phone all the time. Just to yeah to avoid some unnecessary anxiety. <laughs> yeah, I I really I I'm trying to like be better about not looking at my phone like as soon immediately after waking up. Mm hmm. But it's yeah, so because hard. before you know it, it's been an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so easy to get stuck and lost, and it's and it's not good. It's not good for your brain. It's better to leave that, let that be. So that's yeah, not a good ritual to start with. I don't think. No, it's definitely not, and not a good ritual to end with either. Like, you're yeah, not, that's true. It doesn't do you any good to be finishing your day like that. <laughs> right. Um. A book you read recently that stuck with you? Huh. Um, so funny. I'm like, I'm bad at finishing paintings. I'm very bad at finishing books. I have like, I have so many books that have a bookmark in them, like two thirds to the end. <laughs> Just like wild. Um, something I read recently that stuck with me. There's a book about Margaret Wise Brown the author who wrote Good Night Moon mm -hmm. and other children's books. And it's really fascinating. Her life is really like cool and strange. It's called In the Great Green Room. And it's just a memoir about Margaret Wise Brown, but it's, it's great. <laughs> that sounds lovely. I might, I might have to make a note of that. <laughs> a fact about you that surprises people. Mm. I think that when I tell people that I'm shy, that's generally surprising to people. Even like, I'm very shy. <laughs> <laughs> Having this, this thing feel okay now, but in the beginning I was like, oh good, I wanna cry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the third one now, and I'm still like, every time I'm just like, oh man, this is so yeah. nice. <laughs> when I'm doing the, when, when I used to do the airline job, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the microphone and it's like mm -hmm. every time I'm like, I know what to say. <laughs> I'm just, nobody's listening to me. Nobody's Still listening to anything nervous. I say. And I'm like <laughs> terrified. <laughs> yep. Uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Mm -hmm. Huh. Um, I feel like maybe f flying or just like being able to to like jump and fly really high. <laughs> okay. I would say teleporting or something, be able to being able to travel quickly. But I th I think the the journey is kind of often the most exciting part of travel, right? Yeah. Like, I told you I grew up in an airline family and so we flew everywhere and only in the past few years I've been taking road trips and I'm like, this is great. <laughs> I road love when it great. takes 
two weeks to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. This is like so much cooler. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe traveling without needing a a machine <laughs> to help me do so would be kind of great. I mean, it'd be cool if you could like teleport to Europe and then like road trip there. You know, like if you could just do that between countries. But even maybe just like the the flying flying over the sea. <laughs> Yeah, there. The, like, if when you do that, like through it the sunset, altitude, it's, it's really, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sunset, sunrise. It's a great moment to fly. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we might be overthinking this, but <laughs> <laughs> could be true. <laughs> what is one word you would use to describe the glitter box? Ooh. Huh. Empowering. I think the I glitter box is a really cool, it's just like a, the, conceptually really great. It's like giving artists an opportunity and it's also, you guys do so many things. It's yeah. like, it's not just a shop. Yeah, right? it's, it's really important for us that it, that it be a community space as well. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, all right, and the last one, fuck, Mary kill. <laughs> Yes. Spaghetti ravioli lasagna. When we come back to spaghetti. <laughs> uh, fuck, Mary kill. Okay. Kill, what was the, uh, the spaghetti ravioli and lasagna? Mm hmm Kill lasagna, I think. Okay. Was it, yeah. I feel like lasagna is so complicated. It would just like, if it were an entity that I could communicate with, it would make me angry really quickly, right? Yeah. If I, I have to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck spaghetti. Marry ravioli. Ravioli is like pillows. It's like cozy. I know. That's what I always say. I say that it's comforting enough, yet complex yeah. enough. Like, that's what you do for life. That's what right? you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised you're not marrying spaghetti, but I appreciate spaghetti is, that you're marrying spaghetti is like uh, instant gratification, kind of like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I want you right now, but maybe you're not rabbi. But maybe not forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not always. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, is there anything else you want to tell folks about how they can support you and your art or slow down? I mean, we already talked about them making appointments for the fifth. Making appointments at slow down. It's very fancy. Your own <laughs> private shopping experience. Um, I also, I sell art off of my website. You can buy the snarky hearts and things there or from slow down's website. Yes thumbs and pies again too many things going on <laughs> um, really I'm we, get, we have some still at the glitter box as well they're also on our website yes <laughs> yeah go support the glitter box support Find everyone. Over there. <laughs> slow down just do a whole little shopping excursion and <laughs> and i do i do every once in a while um a postcard project when i when traveling exists again, if ever, <laughs> whenever that day comes. It will I, exist again. Ooh. <laughs> I, I do a little project, you can get to it from my website where I'll, I'll send you a handmade felt postcard. I wish I had one right here. They're like postcard size, hand sewn out of felt, and I'll write you a little note on the back from wherever I'm at. And it's, it's just like a donation-based cute way to be okay. supportive. <laughs> Yeah, like, way to support an artist while they're on the road, you know? And if you need a face mask, let me know. <laughs> yeah, especially if you need one with a tongue. Even if you don't want to, if, if you don't have the money to pay for it, just let me know. I'm happy to give face masks to whoever needs them. Yeah, I think that's especially important for people in, like, the service industry right now, who are yeah. a lot of them are going back to work. Um, so that's awesome that you're doing that for folks. You need, and you need a couple, right? You gotta, you gotta wash them. Yeah, you can't wear the same one every day. <laughs> right. Um, all right, anything else you'd like to add about spaghetti or any other matters? <laughs> mm, I don't, I can't, I can't think of a thing. <laughs> all right. 
Well, thank you so much for hanging out for the last hour or so. Thank you so much. It's been great. Yeah, I look forward to seeing the new space. I look forward to showing it to you. Go make an maybe appointment. I'll, maybe I'll make an appointment <laughs> soon. <laughs> I'd love it. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye. Bye.